Welcome to We Are Libertarians. This is Dale Melchin with me as Hody Johns, and today we're going to be talking about the importance of earning it. Now I must turn off my announcer voice. How you doing, Hody? I'm doing great, Dale. I don't know how to turn off my announcer voice. This is who uh, I am now. Oh, this is how... Here, throat punch. There, you should find out. <laughs> all right. We're all fixed up. We're all fixed up now, buddy. Everybody, I think my voice would sound great after a few packs of cigarettes, personally, but being that the hardest drug I've ever tried was like three squirts of Banaka breath freshener, I think that that's probably pretty far off in the future. Wait, please, tell me about this. What's Banaka air freshener? Breath freshener. Yeah. Breath freshener. I yeah. thought you had air freshener. Oh, yeah. Like it, like squirts of air freshener? That would, uh, that would actually legitimately mess me up. That probably would qualify <laughs> as hard drugs, right? Yes, it would with all those unpronounceable things in it. <laughs> so... They- Go what ahead. They, what they always say about uh, the, those type of drugs where you like huffing paint or something is you don't see poor people doing it. You know, that's how the that's how the rich people always. Uh, so it's the rich person drug of choice when you're huffing air freshener. Or um, I'm not that rich. I mean, you know, that, that Febreze costs a lot. Let's be honest. <laughs> or professional painters when you forget to open your windows like I have done at least on one occasion. But D- Dale, you've had a heck of a week. Yes, I did. And that's why the uh, the episode is titled The Importance of Earning It. So I'm going to go ahead and take that cue from Hody yep. to tell you guys about the week that I've had. Um, one of the things that I will do in my work week is uh, what's called a psycho week. And that means working as many hours as humanly possible in the job that I'm doing. And so that's why I titled this episode The Importance of Earning It. Or I, well, I didn't title it. I talked it over with Hody, whatever. So one of the things that I – it irritates me. Even though I've indulged in luxury without working to earn it, it irritates me when I see other people do it. And so after this week was done, because basically my week was get up at 4, get out the door by 5, get to be at work by 6, work until 6 or 7 this entire week. I put in about 63 hours this week. This isn't necessarily me bragging, but I'm bragging. Um, I think if you work 63 hours and you do not work, this is not this is not being at a computer line of work for you. I'm not even wearing my nice clothes. I'm wearing my work clothes still. That's how much of a week this has been. You're. I, I was surprised because you know we we missed our Monday this week because we were like, dude, this is just going to be a nightmare, and you were like, no. We got to I have a message right now it, it, in the it's like coming out of battle. You know, sometimes you learn the lessons 20 years after the battle, but sometimes you need to hear what people are saying immediately after they're finished. And that's what you're here to deliver. Right. And I'm going to try to deliver that um, because one of the things you have to one of the things that I've, I've talked about previously, both on my show and on this show, is the importance of violence of action. If you're if your back is against the wall, I don't mean that necessarily. It's not a status thing. Just want to calm everybody down before they get too angry. It's like Star Wars. I felt the presence of a thousand people reach out with non-aggression principle terror, and then we're suddenly (laughs) silenced. (laughs) No, and the long and the short of the idea of violence of action is taking decisive action and and hitting the target with everything that you've got. And so I've had some things go on within the last week between buying a new van and – you know, having having a shortfall somewhere with the with the vehicle, with my other vehicle being out of commission, um, where basically I just decided, you know what, we're going to step it up. We're going to get this job done for the boss. And outside of that, I'm going to make sure that I benefit from from this. I'm not going to get into, into the numbers or anything, but basically, you know, working all of those hours is going to help bounce me out of the, the little bind that I got myself into. Not going to get too raw and rough about it. But the point that I'm getting at, I, I guess the, the, the main drive of my point here is you shouldn't be – the first thing is you shouldn't be afraid to – if you have the opportunity, if you have a company situation where you can work and, and earn, whether you're in an entrepreneurial situation mm-hmm. um, or in a workplace situation where you are clacking behind the computer, don't be afraid to grab those hours if you can because even though you're going to be tired – or tired as F, as Hody might say. Yes. Um, you should you should grab those hours and get them and get them under your belt and set and set the the money that you earn from that aside to 
whatever it is that you're doing. I mean, if you're if you're trying to if you're trying to do a huge <clears throat> excuse me sea change in in your life, just go after it. And that that's the first thing. Don't be afraid of being tired because as long as you're not falling asleep on the road, getting back and forth to where you're going, you're going to be fine. And if you can get an amount of sleep, mm -hmm. which I didn't actually, I didn't go under six hours of sleep, which is my bare minimum. So that's the, that's the other thing. You shouldn't be afraid of, of just punching life in the face when it hits you. That's the first, that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is enjoy it while you're, while you're doing it. That's and one of the things that I do is I, I listen to this. I listen. I don't listen to myself when when Hody and I do walls together, wall dailies together. Um, but listen to podcast, crank up the music, and just enjoy the journey while you're at it. And then while you're doing it, keep in mind the benefit because there are several times this week where I'm like, Ugh, I can't do anymore. But then you have to dig deep and reach within yourself to be. You have to dig deep and reach within yourself to be able to, to, to keep pushing forward. And that's, that's what I was able to do this week. And yeah, I'm bragging a little bit. I am being a bit of a braggart, but it's something every single one of us can do if we have the work situation that enables us to do it. Or if you're, if you're more on the entrepreneurial side of the house where you have a side hustle, don't be afraid to just kick against it and, and drive forward with it. That that's the story that I've got for this week. Cause basically it was, Painting walls, installing trim, filling trim, sanding it, as well as doing installing some flooring and all these other things that I was I, I needed to do to get this project done to push things forward for my boss. And then I'm not gonna complain about my coworkers, but there's some culpability there. But there's also some culpability on my part because I didn't communicate. But that's basically the week that I've had. And Hody, you look like you want to say something. So go ahead, bud. Oh, you mentioned getting trim. And I was like, that sounds recreational. That doesn't sound like work. No. <laughs> well, when I'm talking about when I'm talking about trim, I'm talking about like the, the piece of the, the piece of wood that goes on the bottom of the wall. I know exactly what you're talking about. You're not yeah. talking about rock star trim. You're talking about the, the oh yeah. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dip the camera, All but right. it's it's the stuff that goes along the wall. And I've done installing trim before. But when you're not that great at it, which I'm okay at it, but you have to make sure you're like, okay, is that going to fit? No, it's not going to fit. Then you have to go back and cut it. And then you get to the point where you're like, I cut it too short. <laughs> you know, but it's just, it's just doing whatever you can and make it just pushing through and doing whatever you can to accomplish the objective to get that money. I mean, that's one of the things that, excuse me. Excuse me. That's one of the things that, you know, people talk about broke libertarians. It's just like find something where you'll be able to where you'll be able to earn a not an unlimited amount of money, but where you'll be able to position yourself to to earn as much as you can. And you shouldn't be afraid of the work that goes into it. So, yeah, I think you got to And you got to avoid that word. Can't can't. I think that I hear I hear that a lot. So, you know, I work at a at a restaurant and I, I work with I have a lot of business relationships within that restaurant. And one of the things that's universal across all restaurants, uh, if you work at one, I'm sure you'll understand, is servers. Oh, I did. That'll say. I, I work at the Pizza Hut. Okay. Oh. Okay. There you go. So you'll get like a server or a cashier or whatever. They'll be like, oh, I worked all morning. I can't do anymore. And I'm like, you, we opened at 11 and it's three o'clock right now. And you're saying you can't work another you know, another two hours until the next guy shows up. Like, I think I think it's it's amazing to me that we are in better health, even if we are heavier. We are in so much better health than the health of our ancestors. And our I'm, ans not, I'm, I'm cut. I'm cut along here. Yeah. <laughs> well, right, most on. of us are in better health than the health <laughs> of our ancestors because our on, ancestors honey. are dropping dropping it like you know age forty or something. You know, there's malnutrition. They're dealing with rotten rotten bones rotting from inside of them and and muscular problems and we've developed so many nutritional techniques and vitamins and medical procedures that have helped repair that and that amount of understanding has made us pretty much as healthy as is a human being planet as we've ever been mm -hmm. but the problem is uh is that we get we then get told oh you know we get used to a cycle and we think anything outside of the cycle must be impossible 
So right. if you are used to working 20, 30 hours a week or 40 hours a week, you just say, this is it. You know, I can't do more than this. And then when somebody's like, well, I, I just pulled in 60. Look, I'm not encouraging you to work 60 every week. I don't want to work. I, am. I, I have, uh, if you look down my timeline, I've worked a few 80s at a restaurant and uh, right. I, I topped 90 once at, at Buffalo Wild Wings. And it's it's a nightmare. And and you're and that's not a healthy thing to do. But Cody, the issue is. When I'm sorry it, to interrupt you. I'm going to interrupt you here. I am so impressed that you pulled a 90. I'm going to set the record this coming week. I will uh I will show you. I believe I I have a screenshot maybe. on my profile pictures. Maybe not on my profile, but on my pictures. I have one of me going with uh with a receipt and just with a dead face. But yeah, it's uh <laughs> maybe 90... I won't do 90 next week, but please don't. I'm impressed. The thing I'm is impressed. it's but it's not healthy to necessarily overwork yourself. So I'm not stressing that you like, oh, you can overwork yourself like but if if it comes up to the point where you say I could do something really great I could get ahead on my mortgage. I could get ahead on my car car payment. I could. But I really just feel like I can't work that hard. Or I just really, I really need this time off. The thing is, you're going to have to work those hours eventually. The reason I bring up restaurant work, servers at the beginning of a month before rent's due, giving away all their shifts, calling in sick to work all the time. Can't, you know, want to leave early. They show up. They're like, oh, it's taking forever for things to get busy. Do you really need me? Can I just go home? Servers at the end of the month before they need rent, picking up everything they can find, begging me, asking if there's a shift that they can work, you know, if they can find something else. And it's like, look, you had to, you had every opportunity at the beginning of the month. You just didn't have the foresight, you know, and that was Wait, really the biggest issue I had. Can you clarify? You're saying like after the first of the month, they're, they're like calling off of their shifts and giving their shifts away. But then before the end of the month, the previous month, they're they're trying to grab as many shifts as they can. Uh, yes. I had that right. Yeah, like Come right on. before rent is due, they grab every shift that they possibly can. Uh, I think I may have just lost connection with Facebook, but Dale, I'm going to get working. Yeah, I'm going to get work. Oh, no. It says it's live now. Yeah, we're still good. Okay, sorry. Wait, did we actually lose the connection with Facebook? Well, my my browser crashed, but... Don't worry about it. Apparently, okay. we're still, we're still, I see us still talking. So I guess we're still going. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, and that's, that's a point I want to address because that, that was a frequent frustration when I did work in food service because I wanted to, when I was, when I was slanging pies, I grabbed as many hours as I could. I mean, they, they capped us at like, for delivery drivers, they capped us at like 32 hours because if we went over that, they'd we'd be full time and they'd have to pay us benefits. Which, you know, I don't know what the problem with that was, but whatever. Okay. But I would I would hear the I would hear the same exact thing is like, oh, I can't I can't keep going like this. It's just like, oh my gosh, you bunch of so and sos, and you know, I, I'm not I am being judgmental. To refer to our last, so I, I may have to go to the confession after this one, but at the same time, I'm not because my my angle on it is folks can do so much better because they complain about their problems and then they sabotage you know, themselves. I don't know what the problem with that and one. And sometimes the key is just sometimes the key is just busting your ass and and getting after it. And you know whether that's on the other personal and economic personal economic side of the house or you know I'm, I'm not going to get political and i did i may have just conjured political hody here but i i think that's part of the issue is we think that that things need to be that the victory needs to be handed to us but you you need to be able to approach that that victory with with a bit of hardness and a bit of a train rolling through actually you need to do it with the power of a train rolling through town so that way you can get what you're after and just you need to find a way to do it in a sustainable fashion um, without wearing yourself out. And, and obviously you want to take appropriate rest periods. But when that time comes, when you have to get after it, go do it, fight, win. It's and it's so accomplishable. And I think people and, and let me tell let's talk about the downside of not earning it. Mm -hmm. I think there's two major problems that I find. The first, there's an infinity of them, but go on. There, there, there's two. Let me just say major problems. I got two big buckets, and you can fit a lot of things into both of those buckets, right? But the first is that if you don't, if you don't earn it, you feel less valuable. 
And that's that because then you get in a cycle where you actually believe that you can't do these great things, these amazing things. It's funny because you'll say, I am in this kind of shape. There's absolutely no way I can run a marathon. There's absolutely no way that I can lift this. There's absolutely no, you just tell yourself there's no chance, right? You insist on it. But there is very, there's proof that if, if a dictator comes in and puts you in a death march, that you're able to, even in your obese state, you're able to go over 20 miles a day, you know, it, it, just because we've seen it happen throughout history. Now, that's not the circumstance we want to have happen. But on one hand, those people went from people that said, I can't do it, I would never be able to do it, to be, being like, uh, okay, I guess I guess I have to or else I'll get shot. And so we get in this comfort zone. We shouldn't need somebody to threaten to shoot us for us to do these great things. So I think the first problem is that you really don't know what you're capable of until you really decide to go earn it. The second thing, and I think this comes down to the earn part. This isn't just the work part, but this is saying if I haven't earned it and I feel like the majority of my life is propped up by my mom, my dad, my family, my spouse, you know, I am, I am, you know, other people are sponsoring my life without officially sponsoring my life. Right. You know, you see this with, uh, if you watch Intervention or something a lot, you see other people that sponsor their lives. And what happens is it's a self-defeating cycle because they feel bad about themselves. So they go to drugs, which makes their life a lot harder, which makes them less able, which makes them value themselves less. And you see how it just cycles downward. So then they turn back to the drugs because they value themselves so little, you know, and it just keeps going down and down. So I think one of the biggest importance, importance is of earning it is that realization that saying that, man, I have this because I worked this hard. I think there's something so cool about buying a car because we, you can relate the price of the car to the number of hours you worked. Mm -hmm. And if you buy the car outright and most people can save it, you know, you might have to work extra, but most people can save up for an entire car, maybe not brand new, but the whole thing within a few months, if you work extra and you say, yeah, this car represents, you know, uh, 3,000 hours of extra work. Well, you know? and for the sake of accuracy, I was to say, for the sake of accuracy, you, are you speaking of, like, a newer used car to the person or an actual new, like, $23,000 Chevy 2019? I mean, I, I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, you know, I, th- I think it... it New or used. I guess I didn't really have an exact one in mind. I think for me, I bought a used car. It was Unnecessary clarification. Go yeah, on. It was lightly used. But I think for me, it was really cool to say, I don't owe anybody for this. This is mine. Mm-hmm. If you owe the bank, you feel like they helped you earn it, even though you end up having to pay more for it in the long run. And so I think there's just something so important about knowing that what you earned is what you have. I don't want to dog on socialism too much in this, but no, go. Do it. <laughs> I know you're fine with that. One of the issues that I have, and this is, this isn't with like socialism as a political system. This is if a bunch of people get together and throw their money in there and then disperse it a little bit is you don't know which por- portion of it is yours and how much you earned. A lot of people say, well, I paid this into it. I earned it. But when you look at federal pensions, we are paying those out way more than what was put into it. Right. And so you have this sense of living. They must. I mean, if you're getting a federal pension, odds are you don't care about the taxpayer too much anyway. But, you know, you didn't earn it. You know, you're saying I paid a little bit into it, but there's no way I paid enough into it to earn everything that I'm getting. And you're living a life unearned. And that's just that I, I think there's a psychological problem with that. And that's kind of a social problem when you live on a welfare system. You don't know how much you earned. Now, there is some truth to saying the government has set me back. It's fair that I that they be involved in the process of putting me on my feet. But since there's nothing quantitative about that, it's still going to affect your psyche, you know, to say that I still don't know what my life on my own without government assistance or since from, you know, these other people could have been. You know, and and I think there's nothing wrong with taking money from mom or dad if they offer to help you out a little bit. But 
you know, if they, but, but at the same time, that's not something that you want to hold your head high about. And ultimately right. you want to get, you know, it's maybe you need it to get through a stage, but you want to get to a point where you're saying, Hey, you know what? Everything I have in my life right now, I am earning it. And that gives the things in your life value because they're not just products that somebody else made. They're products of your work. And that makes that gives your your the things that you own more value and also keeps them from owning you because you say they are not they don't define me they are my products versus exactly. these are things that were financed for my benefit exactly yeah i'm just i'm sorry i was like there's pain on my hand <laughs> so i made a product earlier today <laughs> that that was the point that i was going to get at and i wanted to i wanted to piggyback off of something that you had said earlier um and it related to the whole idea of the, the positive pursuing of a goal and the negative running from whatever problem that you were doing. Jordan Peterson Themselves talks less, about and you see how it just like uh, the po- And um, I'm trying to remember which one. It's not 12 Rules for Life. It's the other book. But the um, I can't remember what, what it's called off the top of my head. But basically, he, he recommends that you set up a paradigm where you figure out what are you running from and what are you running towards. And... The thing that I was running from, well, I'm not going to name specifically what I was running from this week, but I was running from a dragon. And I'm running towards beating that dragon away. Hashtag Game of Thrones reference. But um, that's what you need to do when you're when you're thinking about when you're thinking about the the importance of earning it is what are you what are the negative things that you're getting away from and what's the positive thing that you're running to? And those things should be able to create the the impetus in your mind to be able to to go after that so i just want to piggyback off of that and and share that with the folks yeah no that and that's yeah that's a great addition i i i i love the whole subject of this because i think there is a certain freedom that comes with being a a self-made person and i think none of, now there's a false though there's a falseness there we've all had to have help right uh you know you you leave a baby alone in a gutter and it dies you know no it's gonna go down the river hoody johns it's gonna go down the river and get into the hands of the 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 pharaoh's daughter and then it'll and pharaoh's gonna help it out maybe secretly yes but then that's its identity anyway go on what I'm saying is there's but I'm not trying to unestablish everything what I'm saying is we understand that we've that people have invested in us to get to where we are. So let's invest back in those people that helped us, right. you know, helping your, helping your parents out. You know, ultimately there's a lot of us living in their basements right now. Uh, there need, there eventually may be a time where they will need to live in our basement. We've <laughs> seen, we see the state of social security, right? So be ready to pay it back. You know, uh, now it might it, look, it's probably freely given. For most of us, gonna, all... well, for one, I gotta interrupt you. I'm not sticking my uh, my adopted parents in the basement. They're at least gonna. I'm at least if if we're still in the place that we're in, I will sacrifice my office and move it to the to the downstairs. But my sister, I think my sister and and brother in law have them covered. But I get your point. Go on. Uh, I love my family, but they'd be lucky to get the shed out back. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you're just more giving than I am. To you. <laughs> Go you're, on. Maybe just a little more loving than I am. Y- you uh, have a good point. Go on. Yeah. So I just, but at the same time, I think that you invest in those people and then you just become that self made person to just live a life on your own terms. To say that this is the life that I've built for myself. There's a pride that you can have in it that's not the evil satanic pride of, say, you know, uh, uh, of, uh, of your identity being more important than anybody else's. But this is saying that, like, I got to determine the life that I that I'm living now. And I think earning it just has so much to do with that because there's nobody to pay back in the long run. You know, right. to say that I I did not I am not somebody's, you know, project. I am not somebody's welfare. I am not, so, you know, I am my own person. I'm going to be that way. I think there's a I want to bring up two sets of pe- subsets of people. Um, I really love to le- read the documents from escaped um, slaves. Uh, this is a, a, a for slaves that were set free. There's so many that went on to become prominent in the libertarian movement 
um, that was really burgeoning inside the United States because they have such a value of freedom that, that people don't understand because they had to earn it. They had to risk life and limb to get their freedom. And there's a valuation in that freedom. That es- I'm sorry, I have to say, that escalated quickly, Hody Johns. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> I, 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 we're getting high level here. But there's such a freedom there, and there's such a love there, and, and a joy. And then the other one that I want to bring up, now I don't know if this is true for everyone, but I know for me, I know a, I have, and not, I, I don't want to lie and be that guy who says, I have a lot of friends. I have a couple of friends who have uh, mental uh, d- disorders, handicaps. Um, I don't want to say disorders. They're mentally handicapped. But what happened is they wanted to build a life in which they said, I still want to cook for myself. I still want to clean myself. I still want to have my own place. And it's funny to me. I think that's what makes it something spiritual about it and not just an intellectual, this is why you must earn it because the offsetting costs are greater on this end if you earn it than, you know, that's all That's all high level. But I think there is something deeply, in, um, deeply ingrained in your identity about this because even they in their limited state of mind, they have a desire to earn for themselves. They want to find a job that they can do. They want to find something that they can do, in a, even if it's in a limited way, so that they know that the room that they sleep in is theirs and they earned it. And it's just so, I think for me, that is so inspiring to see them because they have every... Some would say every right, but at the very least, least they have every reason to say, I was dealt a hand in which I cannot provide. I cannot earn for myself. Everybody has to help me. And even in, in their limited capabilities, they still say, no, I want to earn this. I, I have a check from the taxpayer waiting for me at the door, and I'd rather take the check as, as a greeter at my local Walmart. And that's in one case, that's actually where he works. Right. And, and, he, and it's so great. Like, I love seeing him and talking with him. And he he's just so full of excitement when he goes to work. And it's an excitement that people take for granted if they don't think about, I'll just say it like it is, the importance of earning it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you mentioned you mentioned friends and family with with um, with disabilities. I I do have a sister. I don't for privacy reasons. I don't talk about her very much, but I do have a sister with those with those issues. And um, long and the short of it is, um, we managed to figure out a situation where she would be able to work more or less full time, thirty to forty hours a week. Um, her incidents that in the home that she stays in went way down after that. Like I said, I'm, I'm hopefully I'm not violating anything, but this is, you know, in terms of privacy, but basically that's, that's what it comes down to. And she feels she's tired. She feels like she's earned something and she doesn't want to mess around with her housemates. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to offer that as, you know, in terms of the, the story that you mentioned, um, you know, as far as that goes, I mean, it works it, it regardless of mind capacity and whatnot. It, it works for anyone. Um, the other side of the house, I'm going to raise it up a little bit and, and make it a little little less serious. If you have worked the amount of the to the level that you know you've 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 went above and beyond, feel free to reward yourself. Just don't let the reward exceed the level of the work that you've done. Um, feel free to have that 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 O'Doul's or that Heineken zero zero. <laughs> I'm saying this. This is this is a dog whistle for you, you can go ahead and have a beer, yeah. but you know, Hody, Hody can't have Hody can only have Heineken zero zero or duels. So but, <laughs> people wonder why I'm so high strung, right? <laughs> <laughs> but don't let that reward, you know, exceed the 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 upper limit of of what you did to work. Make sure mm-hmm. that you're keeping something back for yourself. Yep. So if we're getting into final thoughts, that's gonna be my final thought. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess my final thought is, uh, I guess to, to piggyback back off of that, uh, there is a different, I love, I'm, I really appreciate you bringing up your sister. I, I am sorry for whatever dynamic that is. And I don't, I, I want to respect everybody's privacy too, but there really is something about somebody who, when you're on the PlayStation store and you're like, oh, I can 
buy this special edition game for a hundred dollars, you know, no biggie, you know, and versus when it's your hundred dollars, you're like, okay, now I do that, but I also am aware, well aware of the value of those hundred dollars. That's an extra shift at work, you know. Join the ungaming. Join <laughs> the ungaming. I am. I am not going to join the ungaming. Uh, that's that's not my plans. Um, but I think there's a different there's a different mindset there if you understand you know whatever your recreational activity is and whatever you spend money on it, you learn to value every cent that you spend on it. You know, versus if you just say, oh, I'll just right. put it on the credit card. I don't know, whatever. You know, I'll get ba- I'll get back to it eventually. It's like, well, you're gonna earn it now, or your kids are gonna have to earn it back later. Like, let's earn right. it now. Um, while we are on the final thoughts, I think going back with with something in your spirit, I guess I'll walk it back a little bit. I almost want to say it's something in your nature. I don't want this to necessarily get to be a religious only episode. Uh, it's something in your nature that uh, I, I look at packs of wolves, and something that they noticed is everybody knows that you know that there there's the dominant alpha wolf who's got a you know, boss people around. Uh, before I get the litany of articles, I'm aware that the person who came up with the term alpha wolf walked it back. But essentially, there's one that's supposed to be the strong, protective guy. But there's also the lookout ones. When I get home, I have a dog, right? My dog wants so badly to earn what his food. So badly. He will. He loves to make sure that, like, they bark at the door to be like, I am keeping the family safe. You know, they want dogs want a job. I don't know if you watch Caesar yes. Milan or Dog Whisper or something, but dogs want a job. And right. and it's funny to think about, but this is something that that's important to give your dog that dynamic to not, you know, you're never supposed to say, "Hey, you're my plaything," and that's all you're going to be is you're just my toy, right? Mm-hmm. To say like, "Hey, this is your role." Now, sometimes you have to retrain the role. The dog's like, "My job is to aggressively kill all strangers in your house it's like hey let's let's change your role let's change exactly what your role is right now you know uh depending I kn- on the stranger i mean some strangers are assholes but nah, i just cussed again but i whatever. i always give my dog permission to bark at people wearing socks with flip-flops my dog is allowed to just go nuts i'm just like that is a real danger that's a real threat you're allowed to go crazy on that the real problem yeah. is does the dog get mad at work boots uh no Dog is dog, dog understands the work boots because Good. he because he's a work dog, you know, he's uh, and, and so this is something that dogs like to do. So sometimes they just like to show off their abilities. I know it, with, right. when I'm going to give my dog dinner, he likes to show me how fast he can go and run around the house and be like, so if, if danger comes and, and we need somebody to run really quick, I'm really good at it. You know, he likes to run through stuff. He gets like the zoomies or whatever, and he just loves to show off. And that's what's going on. But it's something that's in our nature and not just with dogs to bring this back to humans. This is something that is within our nature. Now, because of coercive forces around us, sometimes we lose touch with that nature and we get told, hey, here's what earning it is. Hey, your day was hard enough. You've earned this. You'll you'll hear even good friends say, hey, yeah, spend two thousand dollars on that. You earned it. My goodness. You you stubbed your toe last week. You earned that two thousand dollar vacation. That doesn't count. You just stubbing say, your toe doesn't count, but go on. <laughs> I might be that's that's maybe a light for it, but you know what I mean? Somebody will say, Hey, you've had a really bad day. Hey, you right. went through a really bad breakup. You've earned two tubs of ice cream tonight. Look, I'm all about investment. If you actually did invest your calorie count to cover two tubs of ice cream, that's cool. But remember that what actually is the investment there is your calories in a future or previous meal. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah. not you having a bad day is not the investment, you know? So when we talk about earning it, I just would look to the animal kingdom and look at how much that they want to earn it. And understand that that's really what our nature tells us to do. And so anytime that somebody tells you to do something else, it's against your nature. And it's just not going to be a fulfilling feeling. And it's just you're going to constantly be chasing for that life that you could have earned. But you decide to let other people earn for you. And that's my final thoughts. Dale, I'll let you send us away. Uh, Get out of here and get after it, guys. That's all. I, I, I already gave up my final thoughts. So get out of here and get after it go work that 63 hour week or however much you need to do to get to get caught up to where you need to go so that's a send off sweet simplisticadvice.com we're libertarians.com dale good talking to you man good talking to you hody bye